So in this chapter, we are looking at eukaryotic gene regulation. So when we look at um, how we are formed, when a sperm swims into an egg and you have a fertilized cell, um, that one cell will actually differentiate and become, uh, in humans, about 200 different kinds of cells. When we think about this um, and the DNA that's inside of these cells, though, our DNA is going to be the same in all cells. So all cells in our body have the exact same DNA. So it doesn't matter if you're a lung cell, pancreas cell, heart cell, they all have the exact same DNA. So now when we look at this though, how do they have different functions, right? So here we have our genes. And when we talk about genes um, and gene expression, uh, when our genes are considered to be on, um, we call that being expressed. So here we have, um, here is RNA, and that RNA, polym sorry, RNA polymerase is going to come and attach to the DNA and transcribe it. So here, as RNA polymerase does transcription and makes RNA, we call this gene being expressed. On the opposite, if genes are considered to be off, then this gene is not expressed and RNA polymerase is prevented from transcribing that um, RNA and ultimately making a protein. So there's no RNA or proteins made. So when we look at this and how we get so many different kinds of genes, what we do is we can turn genes on and turn genes off in different patterns inside of our cells. So by changing gene expression and having some genes turned off, and some genes turned on, we can specialize our cells. For example, our pancreas um, produces insulin. So as our pancreas produces insulin, that gene will be expressed, and insulin is a protein that will be made. However, my skin cells also have the DNA for making insulin. However, my skin cells don't make insulin, so that gene is turned off in my skin cells and it's not expressed. So what we're gonna look at is that each cell has the exact same genome. However, the subset of genes expressed in each cell is unique. So each cell is expressing its own genes, uh, or not its own genes, a unique combination of genes, uh, allowing them to carry out their specific function. Oh, so therefore, this process, um, this, the differences between cell types are due to the expression of different genes by cells with the same genome. Now that's pretty important. It, um, expression of genes, uh, sorry, I'm trying to write on this. Um, expression of genes, different genes, but with the same genome. That's a key uh, thing to think about. All right, and we call this, because we have different genes being expressed, we call this differential gene expression. Okay. So in our first box, uh, our question is, how is it possible to have over 200 different types of human cells if we all start from one? Okay, so now what regulates gene expression in eukaryotes, right? Like what's going to regulate or control whether our genes are turned on or turned off? As of now, we know about transcription factors. Transcriptions are factors are a great point, starting point to regulate, oh, is RNA polymerase going to attach or not? But actually, uh, or not actually, uh, we actually have a lot more uh, ways that we can regulate that final protein product. So when we look here, you can see uh, when we talk about transcription, uh, first, or regulating uh, gene expression, Ultimately, what we're regulating is the final protein product, like what proteins are being made, because that's what's going to lead to the cellular function. So, yeah, we can like block transcription or allow transcription, but there's lots of other places that we can influence whether or not a protein is made. So one of the first things we can look at is chromatin. Chromatin is your DNA and protein inside your nucleus. So what we can do with chromatin is we can modify it, uh, which is going to be some of our next slides. So chromatin, we can modify and either allow genes to be expressed or not expressed. Then we can um, have a level of transcription 
we can determine if we're going to allow RNA polymerase to transcribe or not. When it gets to RNA processing, we can do, um, we can like edit that RNA in different ways to get different kinds of proteins, and that would have an impact on gene expression and how that gene is influencing the cell. Uh, then we also have, once the mRNA is in the cytoplasm, we can um, change the rate that we degrade mRNA. So we can change how fast or slowly RNA, um, not fast or slowly, but how long RNA exists in the cytoplasm. It can exist for a few days, few weeks, or up to a few months. Uh, depends on those hydrolytic enzymes. Oh, and then we can also, let's say we do make a polypeptide and a protein. Well, sometimes we can send a message and have our protein degrade, and then that would prevent it from having a final protein structure. So in addition to transcription factors, there's actually quite a few steps possible um, in regulating what our final protein product is. So let's talk a little bit more about chromatin. So uh, when we look at DNA inside of our nucleus, um, here we have uh, DNA and proteins. We call that area chromatin. So chromatin is going to be DNA wrapped around proteins. Um, so when we look at this, so here we see our DNA wrapped around histone proteins. Um, and we can have it either be tightly bound or loosely bound. So with this, you have your... Um, your DNA is this like red area, and then your proteins are here. So the DNA is wrapping around histone proteins. Together, this is called a nucleosome. And then we have the space between nucleosomes we call linker DNA. All right, so a nucleosome is DNA wrapped around a histone protein. What is a nucleosome? Awesome, we can put this in our box too. Uh, and you can also kind of like make some notes about what chromatin is in your box too. Ooh, now we're going to look at euchromatin versus heterochromatin. So here's euchromatin compared to heterochromatin. Now what difference do you notice? Yeah, you can kind of see how in euchromatin you're going to have greater spaces between the nucleosomes. And also, if you really think about this, if RNA polymerase, let's pretend this circle, I don't know what that is, but let's pretend that circle is RNA polymerase, um, and RNA polymerase was going to come and attach to start transcription, which one would it have an easier time attaching to? It's going to be euchromatin. So when we look at heterochromatin and euchromatin, um, we see that generally genes within heterochromatin, this one, uh, are usually not expressed. Because think about how this even just looks. It's super tightly, like, condensed together. That's going to make it very difficult for RNA polymerase to come in and attach and start transcription. Then when we look at our euchromatin, our euchromatin is going to be um, much more loosely bound on these... On, uh, on these nucleosomes, these uh, histone proteins. So having more space between them kind of opens up that chromatin structure and allows for RNA polymerase to come and attach and begin transcription and the process of gene expression. So when we look at here, um, modifications to the histone proteins and to DNA can influence chromatin structure and gene expression. So modifications means like changes. So we can change the histone proteins or the DNA, and that will lead to us creating either euchromatin or heterochromatin. So our next couple slides are going to look at how we can edit these proteins um, to create hetero or euchromatin, uh, and then also how we can modify our DNA. All right. Ooh, so what's the difference between euchromatin and heterochromatin? That goes in your box three. Okay, so let's go ahead and see. So here's one thing that we can do. And you can see right here, we're looking at the histone proteins. So one way that we can modify chromatin. Right now, our chromatin is in the heterochromatin form. It's condensed. Um, and if up here, this little blue circle represents RNA polymerase, what we can see here, RNA polymerase cannot attach and transcribe those genes. But if we have 
acetyl groups come and attach to the proteins, to the histone proteins. Then what happens is the DNA will actually unwind. The chromatin will unwind, creating um, euchromatin. Now it's more loosely attached, and what's going to happen now is RNA polymerase has the ability to come and start transcription. Of course, you would need transcription factors and other things, but the fact that it's more loosely um, bound now allows for transcription to take place. Now, histone acetylation promotes transcription by opening up that chromatin structure. So by opening it up, it allows for transcription. Um, whereas here, if we were to remove those, okay, so if we take off those acetyl groups, I was just repeating, sorry. So if we take off those acetyl groups, it actually will condense back into heterochromatin. Now, like why? If we look here at this histone protein, we need to remember that our DNA is negatively charged. Those phosphate groups, when we look at a nucleotide, a sugar phosphate backbone, this uh, phosphate group has a negative charge. So the um, acetyl group, or sorry, sorry, the histone proteins have a positive charge. So right now, the positive blue proteins and the negative DNA are like attracted to each other, which gives us that heterochromatin. Whereas here, when we add acetyl groups, I'm sorry, when we add acetyl groups, what's happening is it's neutralizing that positive charge. So now there's only a negative overall, and that's why the DNA is repelling each other, and it's like stretching out. So it really comes down to charges on these molecules. So it's kind of rad. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, look at uh, just a picture. So here you have uh, chromatin. Then when you add acetyl groups, we can see it's now been stretched out. And then when you take off the acetyl groups, you go back to heterochromatin. When we take off the acetyl groups, we call that deacetylation. Acetylation is adding and deacetylation is removing. So here, when we have acetyl groups added, our gene expression is turned on. When we remove or take off acetyl groups, our gene expression is turned off. Okay. So here, how are histone acetylation and deacetylation related to transcription? That is your box four. Ooh, our next one, um, I think we're going to save for class time.